so my throat's a bit sore, but hopefully I'll be able to last the talk, in case you're wondering why I sound quite croaky. Um, so I really want to talk about why drama could be seen as dangerous. Drama's great in my opinion, there's no denying it. It gives us theatre and cinema. Without theatre there wouldn't be any Mamma Mia, no name is, no Phantom of the Opera. And without film there'd be no Breakfast Club, Good Girl Hunting or 21 Jump Street. But of course I also have to mention that drama gives those who practice it the opportunity to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and to make people laugh, cry, love or hate. Now I could very easily spend these 15 minutes going on to all about how amazing drama is and probably would run over time because I have so much to say. But instead of using this time to indoctrinate you with my belief of the numerous benefits drama can give someone, I want us to all study drama from another perspective. I don't intend to end this talk with a direct, conclusive argument whether drama is good or bad to both actors and audience. But more simply, <coughs> I want to just start a discussion and put forward another viewpoint to take into account when looking at drama from the outside. Nobody knows for sure what this secret ingredient to becoming an actor is. Is it that one of the greats, such as Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks and Kate Blanchett, have this genetic predisposition to extraordinarily manipulate their emotions that they can use to perform any character? Or is it simply that they are sensitive people who have an extraordinary ability to empathise with others? Either way, we can all agree that these greats have outstanding talent to be able to put themselves in other people's shoes. The problem is, though, whether it is healthy for actors to do this for so long. Has drama become dangerous for actors? Unlike in the Dionysia era, where drama was used as a form of catharsis, where actors only embody different personas for five days a year, the film and theatre industry nowadays demands actors to relive the same emotional torment in their character experience for weeks, even months at a time. Now, I'm not saying that Will Ferrell was going through emotional torment when playing the news reporter Ron Burgundy in Anchorman. I'm talking about those actors who've taken very dramatic and serious roles. How many of you knew that Adrian Brody became depressed for a whole year after filming The Pianist because the methods he chose to prepare for his role as the Jewish pianist Vladislaw Spillman, I can only hope I pronounced that right, living in Nazi Germany? He left his girlfriend and apartment, sold his car, disconnected his phones and moved to Europe with only two bags and a keyboard, eating just two rolled eggs for breakfast, a little chicken for lunch, and a small amount of fish or, fish or chicken with steamed vegetable for dinner for over two months. How many of you knew that the late actor Heath Ledger isolated himself in his apartment for three months, reading only graphic novels, running on two hours sleep a night and kept a diary, to help himself get into the maniacal shoes of the Joker in The Dark Knight, the role which is assumed has led him to a suicide? And the thing in common with these two actors is that they have both here used the technique of method acting to better identify with their characters. Method acting is where an actor puts themselves in similar circumstances to their roles so to truly bring out sincere and intense emotion in real life when performing on set. However, is it right to encourage <coughs> this practice when it clearly has potential life-threatening consequences? The problem is most who use method acting as a dramatic technique are the ones who get the highest critical acclaim for their performances. Both Adrian Brody and Heath Ledger won Oscars for their roles, which would only increase the appeal of this technique. So is the solution to ban method acting, if that is even possible? Even more so, method acting aside, maybe the sheer fact that actors are now having to embody roles for months on end versus five days a year is too demanding emotionally. Successful theatre companies require actors to perform the same role for often over a year and big blockbuster films require actors to take on a role for an average of six months, which only makes me wonder whether it is healthy to make people go through such dark and intense emotions for a sustained amount of time. It is already known that chronic stress can cause physical health issues, because long-term elevated cortisol levels can cause your adrenal glands to damage your immune system and even cause memory loss by shrinking vital brain tissue. Can you tell I want to be a doctor? <laughs> so, who is there to say that having acts induce similar emotions for long periods of time shouldn't be taken as seriously health-wise? So, should we be limiting filming schedules for big films or instate mandatory recess times between touring theatre performances so to give actors a chance to recover from intense and difficult roles? Maybe if it was more widely known that Anne Hathaway reportedly went back home and cried every night during the filming of Les Mis, where she played the prostitute Fontaine, because she was so overwhelmed by the themes and emotions she put herself through every day. This point might be more highlighted today, or maybe this is brushed over by the media and sacrificed for entertainment. Unlike the audience when entering a theatre or cinema, 
The emotions they experience is very compartmentalised and left in either the auditorium or the screen. But actors go through those emotions that you felt for one small hour and a half in the day for countless hours, for weeks. Imagine having to relive the sadness watching the boy in striped pyjamas over and over again for days, let alone months. By the way, if you haven't seen it, you can find what I'm talking about on Netflix, but I wouldn't watch it in a hope for a little light entertainment. <laughs> However, some of you may have noticed that all the actors and actresses I have mentioned are mainly seen in cinema. That might be because they see a lot more film than theatre because it's much cheaper, but it does open up the question that maybe it is only cinema which is bringing on these dangerous effects on actors. If any of you have ever been on stage, the presence of an audience is a constant reminder that you're performing and acting with someone else. Yet, if you're acting in a film and instead placed yourself in a believable set, surrounded by what seems like a whole other world, surrounded by only other characters, can anyone say that it wouldn't be far easier to forget that you're performing? What I'm trying to say is that maybe distancing the actor from the audience is actually dangerous because it's too easy to completely immerse themselves in the role without the reminder that this is theatre and not real life. But isn't that the point of drama, to, to be someone else, to put yourself in someone else's shoes? I think we can agree that the sign of a truly amazing actor is not to sit there and think, oh my god, I can't believe Steve Carell is such a good actor, but instead to be there thinking, oh my god, I can't believe that's Steve Carell. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm using Steve Carell as an example, feel free to search for his films after this and you'll see what I'm talking about. His variety of thematic roles should be given more credit. There's no doubt that people like Steve Carell and their ability to transform into someone else should be praised, but we should ask whether the way that the performing arts are such a keystone to the entertainment industry, if there should always be so much attention on the characters created by the actor instead of the ability of the actor themselves. Did you know that many actors are terrified of public speaking? This may be because, unlike on screen and stage, the actor is now presenting themselves to the audience instead of the persona which they can hide behind. There is no improvising with themselves. When linking this to successful actors such as Harrison Ford, who admittedly is afraid of public speaking, then maybe it begs the question whether these successful actors are subconsciously learning to act in front of others instead of being themselves, since that is what clearly is getting the attention. But isn't that what everyone does? Bring a different persona to different situations? In a way, we are all actors. You aren't the same in a formal meeting as you are with your friends on a Saturday night. Maybe, maybe all of life, life is a little bit of acting, and despite all the things that could go wrong, like in anything that you do, there's one part of drama that solidifies my belief that it is so significant. It teaches us that we all have a voice. And whether you choose that to be through characters on stage or in everyday life, it's a voice that deserves to be heard. <laughs>